Brr, it's a cold day here in North Dakota, so let's work in the shop. It's like five below up there right now. So I got all this stuff up by the door. I'll load that up here at some point uh, in the truck, and I'll bring that stuff back home with me when I go home for Christmas. Uh, like I said, continue with the disassembly of this. Uh, I started taking apart the shifting. Um, I don't know what this is called. It's got the detents for the shifting rail in it. I pulled the plugs with the springs out here. This cover comes off the top here. That's just access for the shifting rails in there. So I'm going to get this all apart and I'll show you how those detents look inside of there because I realized I never showed that when we had it apart when we got it all freed up and working properly. So I'll get that apart and I'll show you. Okay, with the shifting rail detent housing apart, I can kind of show you. So there's a series of detents in the shifting rails. Uh, so down on the bottom of this is the slug. And that fits in the detent, so that's your little detent. And the spring is behind that and the pipe plug holds the spring pressure to that. Um, so that allows it to engage in the different positions for the different gears. And then between these two rails, there's another detent with a point on either side of it that goes between these two. So it only allows one shaft to be in one position at any given time if that makes sense you can't so you can't have the two shafts working against each other uh, so yeah that's kind of how that works there again once this is all done and clean and going back together i'll probably make some more videos you know explaining better how it all works right now these shafts are still so sticky it's hard to give a good demonstration once everything is clean and properly operating I can uh, maybe give you a little bit better a little better view of all that stuff but just basically it's it's to keep the rails in the right position so you can't shift in two gears at once okay I pulled the three bolts that hold this part of the housing on and then this comes off to reveal the, it holds that big bearing for that belt pulley main shaft. So now I can remove that and then that bearing and gear should come off the end of that shaft I'm thinking. And then I should be able to... Oh, let's put this down here. And I should be able to pull this cover off, a couple of bolts. And I think this whole shaft will come out this side, leaving the gear to slip off the shaft as I do that. And then I might be able to rotate this shaft around so I can drive this roll, or not roll pin, taper pin the other way to get the shifting piece loose from the shaft so then all that can get removed. I might have to get both shafts loose to turn around to do that first. And if that's the case, I probably gotta remove this intermediate shaft and gearing before I can do that. And I'm not sure, I might have to remove the whole differential assembly before I can do that. So I might be kind of going about this all backwards. Uh, I also might have to remove the clutch so that main bevel gear goes out the front first. I think I could probably get it apart without having to do that first. It'll have to get done eventually anyway here, but it's all about figuring out what you got to do first to take things apart. Okay, I got the clutch assembly, main bevel gear shaft out of the front here. That was a little bit of a chore too. But uh, 
Got it out of there. For future reference, the bolt with the slot in it goes in the upper corner here because when it's all assembled, you can't get a socket in because there's a clutch throw out shaft fork there. So you gotta get a screwdriver on it to get it. Kind of neat, you can see the old gasket and the writing on them. So this is kind of important because this gasket thickness pack, there's actually a couple different layers of gaskets here. That's what sets your backlash between your main bevel gear and your main transmission bevel gear to get those to mesh properly. So we'll have to uh, keep track of that. Well, I'm going to put this aside and continue trying to get the main throwout shaft fork and stuff out of here. And then this compartment will be empty. Uh, I think I might have to go back in the house and not touch anything out here today. <laughs> so, so I was loading up some stuff to go back home, you know, the head and the jugs, and I loaded up a bunch of the uh leftover long fender 2035 parts i had in the basement yet bring them back home since it's going to be a couple of years before i get to that project now that we've tarred into the 1525 so i figured i'd uh i came across you know i got some radiator parts down there yet uh and i was curious whether the radiator caps or any of the parts for that matter were interchangeable with the 1525s I had been told that nothing was the same, uh, but I wanted to check. Because um, I thought maybe the cap would be the same if anything else. So this is a new uh, cap that uh, my friend Paul made a run of these um, uh, probably a number of years ago already now. Uh, and they came with the long fender projects that I got from Phil up in Canada. Uh, it came with the new neck you can weld in and whatever. So, the good news is that that is the same for the 1525s. So I'll have to see if uh, Paul has any more of them left. Um, we get a couple of them. He does for these tractors. Uh, so that's good news. Um, <laughs> the reason I was growling when I started frustrated, I came out here, I set these down. Stupid thing tipped over dented my brand new garage doors and I got two little dents in there. Oh, that's going to bug me. Man. Uh, but yeah, the, the, it is long fenders are a little bit taller and also a little bit wider than the 1525. So they are, they are different. Cores, of course, would be different as well, and the shrouds are different as well. So, to my knowledge, the only thing that is the same between the two is the actual cap. Um, I haven't checked the handle yet. There's a chance maybe the handle might be the same. I suppose I could compare that. I think I actually have one of those. I just loaded up. Put the sock on here so it wouldn't dent the door. Let me open the door. Uh, let me go check that. So it appears as though, because this is a long fender 2035 crank handle, uh, it appears that actually is the same as well from what I can see here. Uh, of course the spinners would be the same. As far as I know that was the same through all the tractors, 1830s all the way up to short fenders. Uh, that, that casting is the same. Uh, it looks like, yeah, that the actual crank handle is the same too. Um, I don't know if the shaft is or not. That's just a shaft though, nothing special about that. So to add to the frustration, I was out here last night scratching my head trying to come up with something. I cannot get that bevel gear uh, and bearing assembly off of this belt pulley shaft. Uh, I tried a couple different things. <laughs> Some of which things I should not have tried and mistakes were made. I may or may not have chipped a little bit of the edge of one of the teeth off. We ain't going to talk about it. <laughs> um, so then my latest attempt, I figured I, I rigged up a uh, puller into a pusher. 
got this piece of bar clamped to the housing and using a puller to push on the center of that shaft and then I had this gear set pushed up tight to the bevel gear I had a block of wood and a chunk of metal in there is a spacer to block it solid against that side of the housing you know with the theory that okay now that that is the gears are fixed I'll be able to push that shaft out of the bevel gear right well it I, no I put as much tension on that as I felt comfortable and it still uh, didn't want to nothing was happening on this end it will move the entire shaft I can press this bearing on this side out of the housing with that method no problem because I got that to move a little bit uh, in the process of taking up the slop uh, so no I don't know I'm at a standstill because I don't know what to do to try to get that off of there I'm kind of running out of ideas um, especially with what tools I have available at this moment but even if I did have a bigger say puller or whatever it's a hard area to get anything in there because there's such tight clearances to everything else the best thing I can come up with right now and it's not the easy solution but you know sometimes you can't do everything the easy way is I will have to well to back up so the, the disassembly as I see it should be that so that bearing is on that gear and then that gear is on this shaft so the easiest you know if that should come right off actually right now there's just nothing but stuck holding it on there best I can tell but I don't it's probably not like a press fit or anything I wouldn't think if it is not very much because it's got the key and the nuts and everything to hold it on once it's in place so it doesn't really need to be pressed on there uh, so I'm thinking it's just just stuck you know uh, if we could rig up a good way to get a good puller on there safely to put some solid pressure from shaft right to gear it'll probably come right off um, and I hate to even mess around with putting any heat on anything because I don't want to take the chance of wrecking that bearing or uh, anything else for that matter. So I haven't tried any heat yet. Um, so anyway, so it should that should come off and then this whole shaft assembly can come out the housing this way and then that gear set will stay, it will come off once the uh, shaft is gone, the gear set will come off the shifting fork and then that can come out and then you can press the pulley off the shaft in the comfort of a press um, you know it has to come apart that direction if I were to get the belt pulley off now the shaft in assembly can go out that way but the gear set would have to go with it because those splines end and to do that this fork would have to be removed first and this is a taper pin so that's hard to get at to drive it back out not uh, you know not impossible but if you do it the other way I'm thinking you could probably rotate this shaft over and, and drive the punch out from the top the taper pin out from the top um, is how I think it's probably designed to come apart but having said all that if we can't figure out how to get that off come up with another idea plan B as I see it right now would be to get this off so that I can drive this out move the whole assembly in farther in the housing farther to facilitate maybe a little bit enough room to get in there with the uh, bearing splitter and puller inside the housing and work on it that way to get it off um, but to do all that like I said these would have to come off first this intermediate gear set would have to be removed assuming that's even possible to do with this in place which I think I don't know yet I haven't really torn into that too far because I can't go any farther with this gear until this gear is removed because they inter interfere with each other 
And I'm not sure, like I said, if I can remove this without removing the differential first then, which I can't do that until I get myself a cherry picker or something. because That's going to be heavy. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of at a standstill on that until I come up with a better idea or some more equipment. Um, so yeah, if anybody has any other great ideas, something I'm not thinking of, let me know. I'm all ears at this point. Okay, to show you over on this side, I did pull that my bearing cap housing, whatever you want to call it, off there to get me some more clearance for my pusher set up here. So there's another height roller bearing inside of there. Um, here's the cap that held it all in place. I'm assuming it's probably a similar thing on this side. Once this cover comes off, there's probably a bearing inside there. And then I'm assuming these must be keyed to that shaft. So, <laughs> you know, that might be fun trying to get that all apart too, depending on how that's all, how tight things are together there to get it apart without wrecking anything. So that's probably a project for another day. Like I said, I'm not feeling it here today. I kind of got one of those, uh, you know, don't touch anything. You might wreck it type of feelings. And those are the type of days you should probably just go back in the house and do something else. Because I don't want to break anything. You know, all this stuff is essentially irreplaceable parts. So anything you break is going to be very expensive to fix or replace if you can find a replacement part so i think with that i'm going to sign off i'm going to see you guys maybe next week and we'll try uh <laughs> doing some more um thank you guys all for watching uh, if you haven't hit the old subscribe button consider doing that it's free it doesn't cost you anything helps uh, grow the channel Hit the old like button and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Later.